Hey everybody, this is World War Guy here today, and today I'm going to show you how to improve your tunic. So this is for anyone who has a brand new tunic that they just got in the mail or whatever, and they want to make their tunic look more used in, or more used, more lived in, and you know, more than just something straight out of the package. Uh, this will also show how to improve your tunic on things that just didn't come out right, such as some tunics don't have the correct button, so you gotta change that. Uh, you know, where to get good insignia, how to imply insignia, things like that, as well as getting your tunic dirtied up and more used. So what I have in front of you is a M40 tunic from, I believe it was Sturm. Uh, this tunic is about a size 38. It's a bit longer on me. Um, if I really wanted to, I could uh, shorten it for myself, but I'm also going to leave it as it is. Um, so this is a tunic. This is an okay tunic. This is better than some Chinese made tunics, but it is not the top of the line top grade tunic. This is a good tunic that's going to give you a good impression and that you know you're still going to look good in it and still accurate. Just not perfect. So when you first get it, it's going to be pretty bright green. I've only used this out in the, uh, the field or whatever once. And I've let it sunbathe for a total of like three days, so it hasn't seen much aging. So one thing you want to start off with, that you can start out with, is changing the buttons. Some tunics, oops, some tunics don't have very good buttons. buttons. Uh, this one had, I haven't changed all of them, but these buttons right here, are actually brass underneath. Let me see if I can get you guys closer. So these buttons, if you can see, they're you know like a brass color underneath. So when the paint scratches off, that color is going to be showing. Well, it needs to be you know like a silver color. So I replaced the buttons with actually some at the front reproduction ones, which these are actually really nice. Uh, a lot of reenactors like to use original ones. That's a personal preference. If you're trying to be, you know, like a Chad reenactor, go for original buns. But these are still very good buns from at the front reproduction. So one thing is to change your buns to get to more accurate ones to better ones. Um, another example here, uh, I'm gonna have to change these buns because these are just regular plastic ones. I need to get, uh, I believe, paper press buns are gonna be a good uh, change for the uh, from these buns. So make sure you change your main buttons, your sleeve buttons, buttons, and also the buttons for your collar tab here. So that's one thing you can do straight off, or right off the bat once you get your tunic in the mail, is to change your buttons. Uh, next, you wanna go ahead and, you might as well go ahead and your, go ahead and apply your insignia right away. Uh, there's two places that I know of that make great insignia at the front, actually has some good continental insignia as the eagle right here and these Litzen are actually from Kelly's Militaria no they're not they were actually from 1944 Militaria which these are very good Litzen or you know collar tabs and uh, once you fold them correctly like this they really make your tunic a lot lot better so now we're gonna go I'm gonna we're gonna go and transfer into making your tunic age better and more used in. All right guys, so once you've applied your insignia, your, your new buns and so on, now you're gonna to wanna to kinda of make your tunic look a bit more used. Not dirty, but used. And basically, it's burning and shaving. Now you can either use these two items, you use a, you know, just your typical razor or, and, a, and a lighter, or some people have used you know, heat guns or, or you know, blow torches so it takes a bit uh, less time to, to burn all this. And the whole goal for this is to get rid of all that ex excess fuzz. When you first get your tunic, it's going to be pretty fuzzy, as expected. But you know, what, you have to imagine when you're living in this tunic for days on end, non-stop, you're rolling around the dirt, the mud, the rain, the bush, everything like that, that extra fuzz is going to eventually wear off. Now, unless you're an extreme reenactor, throughout the entire year, more often than not, you're not wearing this. You're only wearing this maybe a total of, what, 20 times a year, maybe? Depends, I don't know. So it's gonna take a long time for the extra fuss to naturally wear off. 
So that's where this part comes in. So it's pretty simple. It takes a while if you do it this way. But all you just want to do, you just kind of burn some ends there. That takes off any, uh, that kind of shorns the, the extra fuzz. And then just go ahead and shave it. Literally, if you're just shaving your leg, your face, your chest, your back, your butt. <laughs> just like that. No special trick to it. You can see there. That's just a little bit in there. But you just want to keep doing that. And, you know, once you do, once you do it once with your tunic, go ahead and do it again. Maybe go over it a second time. That's to, to be sure. Now you want to be careful you don't go too hard on it. You don't want to push too hard because then you're going to really get down to the fibers and it will kind of weaken the spot. Not enough for it to rip easily, but you know, you don't, don't press too hard and don't sharpen your blades to uh, the sharpest possibility. Yeah, so there's, there's more fuzz there for you. So yeah, or... So you can do it this way or use a blowtorch, the blowtorch, you know, or heat gun, I, I believe, not a blowtorch, heat gun. Uh, that will get the job done uh, a bit quicker, but you might not want to put the insignia on if you do it like that. One thing to note, do not put a flame or put these over a flame, your Bevo insignia. I learned this the hard way, sadly, as uh, the fuel cap here. Put the flame on the Bevo a little too long and uh, yeah, it melted. So, I learned the hard way, so you guys don't. So do that, and we'll come back to the next part. One thing to remember when you guys are doing the shaving and burning part is, for example, in the pockets, you don't need to worry too much in this area because you have to imagine that this is usually covered by the flap. So do kind of just the outline and under it. Same with the collar. Don't worry too much about what's underneath. Just worry about what is not covered and that'll make it more accurate. All right, so after you're done shaving your tunic, shaving and burning, as you can see, it's pretty done here. You can kind of see the difference there, a little bit. But once you're done with that, you want to go ahead and just get it all soaked up. This will get any of the, the residue off, anything that's left behind off, uh, and then you'll be ready for the next step. So let's just begin. Now, while you're waiting for your tunic to dry up, uh, it's a good idea to get some rock and just put them in the pockets. This will give it that baggy look. Looks as if you had stuff in your pockets for a very long time. You wanna put a lot more in the bottom pockets rather than the top pockets because obviously the top pockets, you only you know, have your solbuch, your cigarettes, your uh, papers, so like that, while the bottom pockets, you'll have your heavier items. All right, so once you're done putting your, your rocks in your pockets and you let the tunic dry, you're gonna to wanna to find a muddy patch in your backyard, front yard, wherever. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna muddy up the tunic. Now the reason for this is you have to understand that the soldiers during the war, they would crawl through, you know, dirt, grass, mud, gravel, sand, concrete, whatever it may be. And you know, their tunics got dirty very quickly, very often. So we're trying to, to do that. now. We're gonna get it as muddy as we can with the one patch of dirt that I could find that I had to get wet. And then we're gonna let the, the mud dry. So for, for now, let's just get it all muddy. And you wanna really get it everywhere. And you want a dirty tunic. Now don't worry, we will get the majority of the mud off eventually. Right now, we're just trying to get it dirty so that the fibers of the tunic can really take in all the mud make sure you get points where you know that you're going to be on such as your your elbows you know whenever you're crawling or prone or whatever it may be so make sure you get the elbows all muddy um, this is something that you're going to want to do after a rainy day when there's mud everywhere and there's a lot of it here i'd have to get a bucket of water and pour it here and hope for the best yeah go ahead and drag it around the mud Make sure you get the chest area, anywhere that you're going to be crawling in the mud. And like I said, don't worry, we're going to clean it off because hopefully the mud will stain the tunic in all the right places. I'll see you on the flip side.
All right, so once you get the big clots of dirt out of your tunic, you're going to actually want to soak it. Now, that seems all you might be wondering, hey, that's going to clean out all the dirt or the mud. Uh, but this is really to, you have to understand, you know, it rained, soldiers got wet, so their tunics, a lot of times the dirt washed off. Uh, this will wash off the dirt, as you can see those splotches of dirt here and there. They will get washed off, but the idea is that the dirt, the color, is going to, hopefully, we'll see, stain the tunic and it's going to have this brownish tint to it that's where we're going to find out and we're just going to if i can find the right one we're just going to get it wet now i wouldn't say too soaking but enough to get most of the dirt out of the tunic all right so for some reason my phone wasn't recording uh so i kind of skipped a step uh what i was meaning by brushing off the dirt is i took a wire brush i would suggest something maybe a bit softer not as coarse but what I did is for the big clumps of dirt, I just brushed it off like so. Uh, not to do too much, not over the insignia, but just enough to get those big clots of dirt out. And then we do the washing like I showed you. All right, so after you get all the dirt baths done, you know, the, the rocks and the shaving, all that done, you're gonna wanna add some details. Now you have to understand, you know, Germans, they clean their rifles, they might've worked on, on vehicles, you know, they touched oil and all that stuff. And of course their hands are all oily and then they touch their tunic, their pockets. So that's right, let's get some motor oil on the tunic. Now, when you wanna do this, you don't wanna put it everywhere on the tunic because, you know, you're not gonna get oil on your shoulders unless you do it on purpose. Um, but you're gonna wanna put, you know, pocket flaps you know in case you gotta reach in your pocket maybe the uh, around here the around the main opening places where you're gonna touch your tunic after your hands get all oily so I don't work on cars so I don't always have my hands dirty but if you work on cars bring your tunic out so they can kind of clean your hands on it in the right spots but what I'm gonna do is basically you get the oil part and you kind of just spread it around on the pocket tunic or the tunic pockets like this just a little bit something like that or you can straight up just get oil from a bottle if you want uh, whatever works and then kind of just spread it around if you get some on your hands just wipe it on your tunic pocket instead of getting a rag and if you guys can see that already kind of adds some character to it so we're going to keep doing that and then we're going to come back and see how it turned out all right, so here's basically the end result of the H tunic. Um, so I put the motor oil on there and it actually looks quite good if you ask me. Uh, yeah, so one thing I would have to do is continue the mud baths. Um, that's something that I can only do when it's raining because I don't really want to get a bucket of water every time. Plus the rain and mud works a bit better than one bucket of water. So keep using you know, your mud baths and every time you go to an event, it's going to get better. It's going to improve every single event. Uh, and yeah, so this tunic looks a lot more used, look like it's been there, done that. And it's a lot better than a brand new tunic, if you ask me. Now we can go a little closer and hopefully we can see the difference. So, here's part of the tunic that was untouched. You know, no shaving, no burning, no mud, no oil, no nothing. And then there's that, so you can actually see the difference. It's quite drastic there. So it doesn't, it does make it better and it does make you look like a true soldier, I guess. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah. So there's that video kind of long, but I hope it was informative. Uh, if this did help you guys, please drop a like, write a comment, um, share the video to help your fellow reenactors get a better looking tunic and subscribe. But besides that, you guys have a great day.